Good evening, everyone. I would now like to call to order this public hearing, which is being held pursuant to Section 464 of the Local Government Act to consider the following proposed bylaws. Machosan Official Community Plan Amendment Bylaw Number 698 and Machosan Land Use Amendment Bylaw 699. The general purpose of Bylaw 698 is to amend the land use designation on 4499 Leafield Road from upland to a split designation of rural and rural residential two. The general purpose of Bylaw Number 699 is to amend the zoning on 4499 Leafield from upland and rural to a new split zone configuration of rural and rural residential two. The purpose of both bylaw amendments is to allow the applicant to apply for a subdivision to create one new parcel that is approximately 1.2 hectares. At this public hearing, any person who believes that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaws shall be given an opportunity to be heard on matters contained in the proposed bylaws. However, it is important that all who speak at this public hearing restrict the remarks to matters contained in the bylaws and it is my responsibility as chair of this hearing to ensure that such remarks are all so restricted. Those of you who wish to speak concerning the proposed bylaws should, at the appropriate time, commence your address to council and the public hearing by clearly stating your name and street name for the record. Then you may give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposed bylaws. It should be noted that this public hearing is being recorded and web streamed live, and the recording will be posted to the district's website. Members of council may, if they wish to, ask questions of you for clarity about your statements following your presentation. However, the main function of council at this, this evening is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council at this public hearing to debate the merits of the proposed bylaws with individual citizens. Everyone who deems their interest in property to be affected should be given the opportunity to be heard at this, at this hearing. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. If you wish to provide a handwritten submission to be included in the record of the public hearing, you must hand submission to the corporate officer, Ms. Hansen, prior to the close of the public hearing. Once the public hearing has adjourned, council is not able to receive any further information from the public on the matter. And as a matter of information, the proposed bylaws are on the council meeting agenda for consideration later this evening. Please be reminded that there will be no opportunity to speak to the bylaws at that time. The opportunity to speak and provide council with your inputs is now at this public hearing. During the course of a public hearing, the issue, certain issues may lead to enthusiastic or emotional statements. Regardless of whether you favor or oppose any argument, I would ask that you please refrain from applause or other expressions of emotion. Such restraint better enables the views of the public and community to be expressed and heard in an impartial forum. Okay, so I would now like to move into the agenda. I would like to ask Ms. Hansen if we have received any further correspondence or communication from the public that council has not already received. Okay, um, the proposed bylaws, they are in the package outside, but again, as mentioned, they are related to official community plan amendment bylaw 698 and also the zoning amendment bylaw 699. So at this point, I would now like to ask the applicants to come to the podium and please provide your input to this public hearing. Thank you. Good evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to express our thanks to council and staff for all the work that's been done on our application. As someone who battles with the photocopy work every day, printing of the notes, agendas, and reports alone has been very much appreciated. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to state exactly what we have applied to Machosen to do, as there have been lots of incorrect information being tossed around over the past year or so. We have a split zone. 10 acre property in the land use map, 5 acres rural and 5 acres upland. On the official community plan map, it is painted as all upland. We want to rezone and subdivide
occupied a three and a half acre rural residential two and a six and a half acre rural property. We plan to build one house, one workshop, drill one well and live there for the rest of our lives. 40 years more or less, we're in our 60s. Our daughter, son-in-law and grandson will purchase and live in the current house with a simple addition of a whole lot of dog hair from Coda, their dog. And there won't be any secondary suites built. Our daughter Carlene and our little grandson are here because they do have a vested interest in this and um, we don't have a baby lamb to bring. So the current OCP map shows our property as the only upland piece on the entire south side of Leafield Road. This is different from what previous official community plan, plan maps have shown. That change was made without any communication with us. No one came to walk the property or inform us that our property would change with OPCP zoning. There was a 50-50 chance I guess, that it could have been changed to all rural and if that had been the case we wouldn't be having this conversation. Every application, as has been reiterated many times, is judged on its own merits. This one change, I don't believe, would open any floodgates of development in Machosen. There's no such thing as precedent in these applications. Your site visit in January gave you the opportunity to see the property. The proposed driveway is not steep and winding. There's one rocky bluff on the property, and it isn't close to the proposed building site. The rest of the property is fully forested with a healthy forest and not one that's struggling on thin soil. We worked with the planner to prepare this application. The proposal that you see is the one she recommended we go with. We carefully chose three and a half acres RR2 so that it wasn't too small to require a variance application or too big to open the possibility to subdivide again. The six and a half acre rural property can't be subdivided again and is big enough to fit the definition of a rural lot. No further changes could be made without Machosen having a say. We've reviewed the planner's report several times and nowhere does it say no to our application. It says policy support is not strong so we're here at a public hearing to consider OCP amendment bylaw number 698 and zoning amendment bylaw 699. Those numbers alone tell us that policy change has happened and much chosen. Otherwise we'd be number one and number two. The OCP is a living document. It's not one set in stone that should be looked at and jumped every 10 years with changes. The planner's report also stated that careful consideration is encouraged of the broader community picture. And there are a few broader community folks here tonight and others who have sent in their comments via email. We asked the folks on Leafield Road and of the 28 we spoke to, 24 supported our proposal. The planner's report also cautions about substantial expansion of the rural residential two development. One new RR2 lot I don't feel can possibly be considered a substantial expansion. I'd like to thank the council this evening for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ms. Cote. You, know you know where I live. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Um, <clears throat> my name is Dan. I'm your neighbor. My I've been. Oh, not okay. I've been your neighbor for 38 years. We live at the end of the road. We volunteered at the ballpark for 24 years, coaching and umpiring our kids and possibly yours. We volunteered at the soccer park in Colwood for 14 years, coaching our kids and possibly yours. Our kids went to Hans Halgesen School back when there was enough families in this district to support two public elementary schools. Families have had a tough go lately in Machosa. When we bought in 1986, we paid approximately $80,000. If the cost of a house in Machosen had doubled or tripled in a generation, then our kids might have a chance at affording one. Instead, house prices have gone up 8, 10, 12 fold in a generation, affecting families more than most. If this were 1989, then we could use a bylaw to split off a small portion of our land to help our family, as long as it was family. 
But since that rule was abused back in the day, families are paying the price for it. 20 years ago, when the detached secondary suites were given the go-ahead, they were capped at 750 square feet on purpose, effectively eliminating families from renting. In our case, we would have liked to have just split off the rural portion of our lot and leave the upland portion alone, but that wasn't allowed. We would have liked to rezone to all rural and split five and five like our neighbors, but that wouldn't make it past the planner's desk. So with the planner's approval, we applied for this six and a half, three and a half split. Is it better to have a small orange dot of upland zoning on the end of a road of rural properties or to have a small dot of dark green RR2 on the end of a road of rural properties. We have offered a covenant to Machosen's, in Machosen's favor for no additional suites on either lot for 25 years. In 25 years I'll be 87 years old. If I'm still alive I will be out of the housing market and my grandson may be old enough to move away from home. With no legal precedent set, what has worked for other proposals may not work for ours. What works for our proposal may not work for the next proposal. What we are looking for is a simple creative solution to a problem. A solution with a built-in growth control. And how much more control can you get than doing things one at a time? In Machosen, if Machosen is going to continue to flourish and grow, we're going to have to find creative solutions to help our children, as well as help out with the troubles of the world. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Cook. So we are now at the section of the agenda where we, the public hearing will uh, council will hear from the public. Um, so with that, anyone wishing to speak may do so by addressing the council by stating your name and your street number, street name for the public record. Comments are to be limited to four minutes. You'll be given a 30 second notice prior to reaching the four minute limit. And once again, I wish to request that whether you oppose or, or in favor of an argument, please refrain from applause or any expressions of emotion and I, I ask again, such restraint better enables the views of the community to be expressed and heard in an impartial form. And with that, I would like to open the public input session. So please approach the mic, say your name and your street name, street name as well. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Betty Hildreth, 859 Arden Road. Thanks for exercising the valuable process of a public hearing. Such measures are tools that keep our communities viable. The OCP is also a tool drafted by our citizens as a guideline for municipal governance. The OCP is meant to be a living document to be reviewed and intentionally adapted as our community evolves. It is the official community plan. Please consider the word community. Community, it's not just a place on the map. Community is first and foremost our people. The Cote's request is viable and understandable and needs to be considered in a one-of-a-kind amendment. And, oh, don't worry, these requests won't come up very often because who of our less than 1,600 taxpayers would want to put themselves through this? Thank you much, Ms. Hubbard. Uh, Jim McFirst, Eagle Tree Place. First, I want to uh, stress my opposition to the proposal for the rezoning. <coughs> to rezone and permit subdivision establish a, establishes a practice of spot zoning, something which is antithetical to the OCP and to any serious planning program. Most, if not all of you, pledged adherence to the OCP as part of your election campaigns. This is a test of your commitment to that principle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McPherson. 
Owen Clark, Tavane Road. So, it seems to be a bit of an existential moment in Matosan. And the reason it's existential is because this meeting is all about potentially changing our OCP. Do I have this correct? There's an amendment, yeah. Yes, this amendment. Mayor Little, and I'm going to quote you, Mayor, is all around evidence-based decision-making. And this is what the council does. So let me just review a few points of evidence here. The city planners in Machosan, or municipal planners, have warned against this as being setting a precedent as a slippery slope. Okay, there's some evidence there. Other evidence, all of you were sworn in to protect our official community plan and values. I've lived here for 37 years, and I love my chosen. My children have been here. I'm sure the cotes are very nice, and they seem lovely. It's a reasonable request, but I also understand that they can also build a secondary dwelling on their house as it sits now without any amendment of the OCP. Our OCP has effectively what has kept me chosen the way it is. And the way it is, is magical. Our children go here. When my 19-year-old son, my eldest son, is now 38, when he's 19, he thanked me for growing up in my chosen. Any of you have teenagers? Can you get any thanks? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, all we need to do to really see the real evidence is look over at our neighbors. Look at our neighboring municipalities. The, <laughs> the call of OCP became the um, optional community plan. It was converted into Swiss cheese by endless bylaw conversions. So I think there's a lot at stake here, guys. A lot at stake that you swore to uphold here, and I think it's very serious, and I, I'm not trying to pick on the cotes, and, but I, you know, I, I think it's really quite clear here by the evidence that there's a lot at stake in Machosan. I see our role in Machosan at Machosan being an example of official community plans. Our OCP is baked into the core of our very community values. It's baked into everything we believe in and everything that we do here. This is what makes us such a vibrant community. Our OCP is at the very center of it. So any threat on it, any threat on it, is serious and it's palpable, all right? I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Jane Hammond, Rocky Point Road. Um, going to probably say some things that have already been repeated, but I will do my best. I'm here to lend my support to the application of the owners of 4499 Leafield Road in requesting the rezoning and subdivision of their 10-acre property. Much of the controversy and discussion around this application seems to be about interpreting the current official community plan, or our OCP. And I'll quote briefly from the plan itself. This is probably the repetition. Planning is a process, and the community plan for Matosan is not a static document. Rather, it is a document requiring periodic review as conditions and needs change. The plan should be reviewed and updated at intervals of not more than five years. It is essential that the plan be adaptable, but this is not to permit piecemeal amendments, which then I want to underline, which disregard the spirit of the original effort. Any amendments must be carefully considered about the potential impacts for the entire community. Machosan's OCP was created 38 years ago. Apart from some frequent, infrequent amendments targeting isolated portions, this document has remained untouched, certainly never meeting the intended five-year review intervals. 
If this application is considered a piecemeal approach, I suggest it does not disregard the spirit and the intent, intent of the original and current OCP, which supports a variety and of type, scale, intensity, and rate of residential development, which maintains the rural character of Machosan. The application allows our community to address the confirmed need for housing in our broad community and allows some of our long-term residents to age in place with the support of their family with minimal developmental impact. So a question to ask, is any aspect of this proposal against the public interest of the chosen? Please don't hide behind the 38-year-old 30 <coughs> document, which is overdue for its own public process of review. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Eric White, 4290 Machosen Road. Um, I'd just like to reiterate that uh, I don't think Machosen has so much of a housing crisis as it has a family crisis. Uh, there's nothing in our OCP that allows for the math of a family to continue after 38 years. It's never been, there's nothing in it that allows for people to have kids and that math of like, oh, we had two kids. Well, goodbye kids. You don't get to live in Machosen anymore because I want to live in my house, right? There's no, there's no expansion for family. And these people are asking for an expansion for their family. And if Machosen is going to exist and survive, we might want to, again, address keeping family around and keeping it a family-oriented community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Uh, good evening, Chris Moore, 4545 William Head Road. Um, I'm here, obviously, to contribute to the public hearing. Um, as a bit of a preamble, during the past six days, and as a consequence of 58 communications from APRA members um, in the past five, six days, at which point I stopped counting, <coughs> I feel very justified in standing up here and say that I'm speaking on behalf of the APRM. I've organized my comments under three basic categories. One is process around this evening, the risks, and a resolution. Um, with respect to process, what you as members of council should know is that there has been significant confusion and misunderstanding amongst your residents <coughs> regarding awareness of this event um, and the submission requirements for tonight's hearing. Among the many things we have learned is that a large number of persons would, out of routine, show up tonight at 7 p.m., because that is the usual norm here, rather than the required 6 p.m. And what does that say for those working folks who still do a nine to five in office job and likely have to commute. They're basically left out of the picture. That said, in consultation with staff, the APRM did what we could um, and provided our members and others with what we've learned from staff is required in order to allow those who wish to do so to participate. Um, I would like to add that in 38 years in Machosan, I cannot recall a single public hearing being hosted within these council chambers. The norm has always been to host the same at the community hall in order to accommodate the largest number of participants and never, ever at the height of the summer season. According to our fire code regulations, the maximum capacity within the chambers is approximately 60 people, including staff and council. 
that is not very supportive of a large attendance. Ms. Moore, I do have to caution you, you have four minutes. So I'm gonna give you a 30 second warning, but you have four minutes. May I have the comments. privilege of coming back twice? I would you like can. to get Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other comments we received include, why was this important public meeting not referenced in the Machosan Muse? Rather than, uh, I presume, the Goldstream Gazette. Um, not surprisingly, when folks add all of these factors up, it raises the spectrum for many people that this is one sure way to keep attendance down. I don't particularly share that view, i.e. that it is intentional, but these process comments are not without significance, and perhaps lessons could and should be learned here. I want to get to risks. Should I come back? Risk. Am I there? No, nope, how through. Okay. Continue. But, yeah. um, others have, and I'm quite cer certain, will continue to speak to the risk of approving this application for a rezoning and contravention <coughs> of our OCP. Yes, it is meant to be a fluid document, but it is the one we currently have. The aspect of precedent setting is indeed real. Okay, so I'm time on you, Miss Moore. May I finish the paragraph? I'm and I'll come back. I'm gonna I think it might be better if you start at the top of risk. So I'm gonna end you there. Once um, once everyone has gone around, I will ask you to re restart your comments. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Dina Rivers. I live at 4471 Leafield Road, so I'm about three driveways away from the Cotes. Um, I'm relatively new to Machosan. I moved here two and a half years ago, so I don't have that background that um, most of the speakers tonight will probably have. I moved to Machosan because of the ability to have a family community. Majosen has an option for um, housing. Um, they have an affordability issue. I can tell you when Mr. Cote said he spent $80,000 on his place, I can tell you I spent $800,000 on bare land two years ago. And I put a million dollars into my house now so that I can live there. I have no worries considering the impact on this neighborhood. I walk my dogs down Leafield Road every day. I sometimes have one car pass me. On an occasion, I'll have two. I am not concerned about the impact on my neighborhood. It's the exact same impact that would happen if they built a suite and moved a family into that suite. If the concern is there's two dwellings and they might have two suites, that can be addressed with the restriction I heard about tonight. It's the first time I've heard about it. It's not a major concern to me. Short term, they're building a house. There will be more traffic. Building a house. My neighbors have put up with that. For me, that's what you do in a neighborhood. These are long-term residents. These aren't contractors coming in to flip the property. They have the support of the majority of the people on their road. Not all of them, but the majority. This is an individual application. This is not an application about Matosan's housing needs and the provincial housing requirements. That's not what they're trying to solve, um, and then that's a whole other discussion. This is a long-term matter. They're not going to start their building the day after this decision is made. They're being upfront about exactly what they want, and they're willing to do the restrictions to ensure that it is limited to what they are saying to you tonight. The main controversy seems to be the planned amendment is the geography of the land is steep. I live right there. My property is two and a half acres. The people behind me is the seven and a half from the original tent. Let me assure you, I can't walk up that property. And it's zoned the same way that they're asking to have this zoned. There will be... Um, I have seen, I read everything that was there. 
There may need to be a new well that will have to be drilled. That's something that a riparian or an ecological report will take care of. Um, it's unknown what they're going to do with that. There is not a lot of obje there's no objections to the application that deal with the impact of the direct neighborhood other than that of a well. I did see one about them cutting trees. There's a logging road on their land. They can already cut the trees if they want. That's not an impact. Whether they do it or not might be. Thank I do you see this. Thank you. Um, the objection I saw that it's hard for a fire truck to get up the road. That's something that's to be dealt with by the planners. That's not a, a subdivision issue. Um, again, I've seen the roads, the long driveways in Machosen. Never saw one so long in my life. They're already in existence. The fire department knows how to deal with those. The other one I see is that Mr. Rivers, I have a I you want to come back once you've gone through? That would I be may. great. Okay, thank you. Continuing with public input, please. <coughs> please speak into the microphone. I wish everyone yes. would. Can you hear me? No. no. <laughs> it's not even on. Yeah. That's it's, why we don't hear it's it. It's hard to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy Mitchell. Okay. You notice? I mean, I have a big voice, so it's fine. I am Lot 1, Section 1, Plan, VIP 611B. That's my <coughs> actual um, address, but it's also 580 Woody Beach Road. I am opposed to the rezoning of 4499 Leafield. If this proposal is passed, I have every intention of applying to have my property address above rezoned into two equal lots. Now as my mother sold half an acre to Don Stancil long before Machosen was incorporated, I have only nine and a half acres. But I'm not concerned about that sh shortage because I will simply apply to the Board of Variants, which I'm sure will be compliant with my wishes. My husband, Wes Johnson, and I are on a fixed retirement income of less than 60000 k a year. We wish to age in place in Machosen with the assistance of one or more of our children who will need a place to live. In our favor, Wes and I have been strong supporters of Machosen over the years many years, like, you know, I was practically born here, and were active volunteers and monetary contributors to community organizations. I can happily say that we feel well-liked and well-regarded in the community. We are nice people. We keep our property clear of invasive plants, we use very little water, and we buy local. Best of all, we know and are friends of all on council, and we're confident that you're going to make the right decision tonight. I've got a little um, souvenir for you. Ms. Hemp or Ms. Mitchell, I can ask uh, our clerk, our client <laughs> corporate officer, if she could get your, um, yeah, get your material. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we're in the public input phase of this hearing. Um, I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let Jim go first because she addressed she yeah, and then Heidi after you. <coughs> Okay, Jim Reimer, 4730 Mary Dill Road. I was just beginning to make my notes. <laughs> so, um, they'll be sort of scattered, but I only heard about this this afternoon. So, there are a number of feelings I have about this. 
um, and they'll kind of come out in point form, perhaps. I agree, I feel that um, not letting people know and not having it in the news and having notification, this is a big deal. Um, I've lived here 48 years, and my husband and I were very involved in the chosen in the community. When Gordy tragically, um, unexpectedly died 22 years ago, at that time, um, council had asked, my recollection is that there were, there was one committee or there were two committees or one that divided kind of in half, looking at the problem that we were having at that time, which were the number of illegal suites and extra homes coming on. And people were asked to submit and write, and I wrote a letter explaining that newly widowed and on a big property, <coughs> it would have been very helpful for me to turn my barn into a suite. However, I tried to do things legally and properly, as I'm asked to do, and it was a problem because I knew I wasn't really supposed to do that, and yet I knew that there were a number of properties, and there are to this day many fairly prominent people that are very involved in the Chosen, that have more than one, even two houses or areas of accommodation on them. Frank Mitchell called me and said it was such a good letter because it it really did point out the two sides of the issue. The committees disbanded because they couldn't come up with anything, get along, is my understanding. I think at that point in time, it would have been good to look at the community plan. Um, I still know of a number of people that have extra houses, some of them quite large and lovely on their properties, and have not done it the right way. So the Cotes are attempting to do it the right way. I'm not sure I'm happy about it because I think that it is a much bigger process than just the little gathering here, the way I happen to hear about it, or you no, know, I think it's a very big deal. Um, and this is this is not this is not a threat, this is not anything, but it it makes me look at the situation because I live on a dead end road and I have either six and a half or six point nine acres and I'm zoned two acre minimum. And I'm on my own, and I have three kids, and I will actually look into this if it goes through, because it only makes sense. But I haven't before, because it didn't seem to be possible. I really think that having a meeting at 7 o'clock, and I'm not directing which way to go, <coughs> but making a firm decision either way, I think you might be rushing it a little bit. Just food for thought. Thank you for listening. Great. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. Ms. Hall? Oh, it's your first meeting. Heidi Tong, 4464 Leafield Road. Um, I don't have anything prepared, but we did send a letter to um, Mayor and Council uh, last night, I think where we basically copied and pasted Avril Joachim's letter, which we wholeheartedly agree with. Um, and I just want to say that I've lived on Leafield Road for 31 years, in the Chosen for 31 years. Mm -hmm. My husband has lived here longer. Um, the OCP has lived here longer than I have, by a few years. And it is what has kept our community rural. And this rural community provides a service for the greater Victoria area that is um, something that those communities don't look to do. They don't look to stay rural. They are family communities. They have housing um, for families. That's not necessarily something that we're set up to do. If you were to take every property in the chosen and double it for one child every 20 years, you wouldn't have a rural community with room for agriculture anymore after a while. Um, families are important, but, um, and uh, we've known the Cotes um, as our lovely neighbors for many decades. Um, and it was really hard for me to say no to them when they came to my door asking for my support for this. 
and I was a lifelong child protection social worker. So saying no to people in unpleasant circumstances is something I was professionally trained to do. But it's hard when you have lovely neighbors that you really like and um, you sympathize with their cause. But this is a slippery slope and it is about amending our OCP without a lot of community input whatsoever. And um, we are just, my husband and I are both very much against it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Oh, uh, Chris, we're gonna, there's someone approaching the mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. sorry, thank you. Okay. Hi, Richard Chesson, Leafield Road. I am uh, the direct neighbor of 4499 Leafield Road. I've lived there for 24 years plus. Uh, it's a beautiful place. My place is at the top of the hill. I'm one of the panhandle lots out of the four that exist on Leafield Road. <coughs> the back corner of my lot where my well is, is 150 meters maximum away from the new uh, well that will be drilled if the um, proponents get their wish of building a house in that area. That's the furthest away that they could possibly put their well from my well. <clears throat> the back side of that hill where I live and the back side of my house is very um, wild and <clears throat> forested. It's a valley that comes from Blinkhorn Lake and goes through over to Souk Road over by the airport, Stan's place. I don't know how to describe it better than that, the big field uh, down by Beach Creek there. So it's an important wildlife corridor and the house that they're proposing to build will be kind of right in the middle by the creek in that forest where I see a lot of animals, you know, coming through our property and going down that way. Now the four panhandle lots on Leafield Road are all kind of concentrated at the top of that hill and they're all serviced by one driveway. So there's actually a lot of upland wild forest all around our houses up there on the top of Leafield and Spelman off of Spelman, which has two 10 acre lots that go down and touch 4499 Leafield, <coughs> um, they're upland zoned. So if Leafield property gets to be split, maybe the uh, people on Spelman would like to split theirs going down towards the airport at Stans Soup Road area, down through that valley. There's a um, hidden pond down there, I think it's called, and then it goes into the creek with no name that flows down and goes very close to the proposed building site. Um, it's, yeah, that's, I think it, no, no, there was one more thing. <clears throat> a short while ago at a council meeting, uh, someone tried to rezone on Matheson Lake Road to set their house back approximately 50 feet further back than what a secondary dwelling is allowed to be. And the council said, no, we're afraid it's going to set a precedent. If that's the case for there, and they're afraid it's going to set a precedent, and I mean, lots of places have had a secondary dwelling set back a little bit further. I'm afraid and would hate to see that a precedent become set for this 10 acre lot, which is definitely uplands. Like, you can't get more uplands than uh, 4499 Leafield. It's got a big cliff and it goes into a nice valley. And my biggest concern, though, is my well and having a new well drilled at a lower elevation less than 150 uh, meters from mine, which is about 500 feet. Thank you for your consideration. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Justin. Mr. Van Water. Uh, Chris Van Water, 4569 William Head Road. And I'd like to speak in favor of this application. I think some of these bylaws in the OCP are outdated. Um, I don't see anything wrong with uh, the proposal that these applicants have made for a road that's in, I haven't been up there in years and other than you people going up there on official business, you haven't been up there in years either. So I think it's a perfect spot myself. I don't know if uh, this is a one-time deal or if anybody else wants to do it. Do they have to go through the same lengthy process? Or, uh, But the official community plan, as I see it, uh, there's also a unofficial community plan, which is all the building that's been going on, no permits, 
and lots of people moving into the community. As a carpenter in the community, I know all about it. I've done a number of those jobs myself, some for people in this room. And so it might be time, it might be time for a change. It doesn't have to be drastic. And meanwhile, somebody was talking about the beautiful vistas in the chosen, but they're mostly talking about the farmland. And this uh, giant barn that's going up at the end of Willing Head Road, just about the sharp corner there. Well, if we had proper bylaws in place, we'd probably convince the homeowner or the landowner to position that in a more, a better spot for the chosen sight lines. So there's lots to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Badwell. Uh, Wayne Wilson, Arden Road. Uh, I have mixed feelings about this. I only found out about it a couple hours ago. Uh, but on principle, I'm opposed to it because uh, the precedent of other things. I mean, if uh, it happens here, it can happen again and again until we're beginning to look like uh, those other communities that I won't mention. But uh, I've been here for over 40 years and I've seen the traffic just grow and grow and grow, you know, where I think we should just put up a, a toll booth to come into my chosen. Anyway, I just really uh, don't want to set a precedent for uh, uh, other people uh, to subdivide. I mean, I have 10 acres and uh, I don't want to subdivide. But anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Greetings. My name is Rod Mitchell. I live on uh, Leafield Road, 4464. I am opposed to this, uh, as my wife said, in spite of the fact that we have respect for the Cote as neighbors on the Chosen or on uh, Leafield Road. Uh, some years ago, I, uh, I, I should say, I live on 11 acres of land myself on uh, Leafield. And some years ago, I came down to the offices here to uh, see what my chances were to um, accommodate my daughter uh, with a little pan and a lot, like there's a few on Leafield Road. And I was told basically I didn't have a snowball's chance in hell of uh, having that happen. So, you know, everything I've done, uh, everything I've done after a certain point moving into my property, when, uh, yeah, I'll tell you about that part, because I couldn't move on to it because I didn't have enough money. So I was chatting with a man called uh, Charlie Lockridge, who lived on Happy Valley Road for many decades. I told him about it, that I had it for sale, because I couldn't afford to put in a septic field and everything else, and uh, he said, so, you're going to let them boot you off your own land, are you? And that kind of steeled me, and I moved on without any permits whatsoever. I dug an outhouse, and I lived there for about five years before I was discovered. And the uh, building inspector at the time worked with me, and we got my, my place into uh, uh, legal status and I eventually built a home. What I wanted to, as I say, subdivide to accommodate my daughter, that wasn't going to happen. So she lives in Duncan now, the only place she could afford to get a place. I've already heard two people here tonight that said that they are really going to consider this as a precedent if, if it's approved. And that's out of not very many people. So I can imagine in the whole community there's a whole lot more than just two that are going to be looking at this. The final thing I want to say is if, and I've heard this a number of times, that our community plan is old. Well, whose fault is that? I don't know, but I would say that if it's old, maybe we need to review it. Okay, We don't need to review it by piecemeal spot zoning. That's not the way to do it. It should be reviewed. And if we're going to review it, and this kind of change is allowable, 
Well then, they could do that at that time. But don't rush into this without having a properly reviewed community plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Ellen Frisch and I reside on Perry Crossroad. So uh, my comments tonight are in support of this application and I also would like to make a few observations about uh, some of the things that I've heard tonight. Um, first off, uh, I'm a professional in this area. The, uh, there's been at least three or four meetings with council where this uh, zoning bylaw and um, the proposal has been brought forward uh, for over a year. There have been multiple opportunities for interested parties to attend this council and to speak at the opportunity at the public uh, comment area. Many of the room, many of the people in the room here, I've been at almost all those meetings for the reasons. Nobody who spoke tonight uh, that I recall spoke to this bylaw or this proposal at any of those meetings. This process, in terms of the OCP, is a defined process. You have followed the process for a public hearing bylaw to the letter. There's a requirement for the timing of publication. There's a, requiring, there's a requirement for the notification of the differences of timing, like two weeks, two notices. Unfortunately, the Muse is not published frequently enough to demonstrate that. So just my observation from someone who's done public hearings. Everybody in this community has a free gazette at their doorstep. They can choose to read it or not. I've heard a lot of hysteria that changing the OCP is going to lead to a slippery slope. We forget that this property was split zoned in error and the OCP did not designate the split zone. So this is one of only three or four properties in all of Machosan, including up at William Head Road and a couple others that have this anomaly where a landowner looks at the land use bylaw and sees two, two zones and then looks at the OCP and sees one because the OCP in the past, unfortunately, it was missed. They're really tiny parcels on those colored dots. We do need to update our OCP, but my view is that this is not going to lead to the cataclysmic landfall or waterfall of subdivision applications. Uh, I mentioned I do this regularly, uh, land around here. A couple of the speakers wouldn't qualify in a heartbeat. Maybe one or two of the speakers might have. But everybody in this room that's spoken to this so-called waterfall of subdivision could very well have researched it years ago. Now coming to the planner and being told no, that's valid, but it's not a reason to deny somebody the opportunity to ask the question now, particularly with the fact that they have unique circumstances of this erred split zone. Furthermore, the, the zone of upland, what I heard, and I don't know this, but uh, as it was discussed, it could very well have been a rural zone. It seemed to potentially have been at the time it happened um, up in the air, which, which implies that at this point there is an opportunity to view it in a more flexible manner. Um, so lastly, I would urge you to just consider the conversation. I see this from a pro professional perspective. You've done the right thing. You're holding it in the boardroom. We don't need to have a giant open room. This is not the end of the world. This is not hysteria. Every municipality, when it has a small change on one lot, has to amend their OCP. It happens in every municipality almost every month. This is not a Ms. Marshall, just science have change. To well your I'm report. done. Thank, Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Um, okay, we are continuing with public input as part of this public hearing on the rezoning application and the OCP amendment for 4499 Leafield Road. So your name and your street no, name, please. Okay, my name is Anita Strauss. I live at 1195 Woodley Hill. I'm opposed to this proposal, not for a lack of empathy. I get exactly what the proponents want and, and what they need. 
there's been a number of these that have come by <coughs> in the 25 years I've lived here, um, and, but I am opposed to moving off of practices and procedures that help to keep us in some semblance of control. I would, I would like to say in full control, but I don't think that's likely to happen. Our OCP, our policies, including our planner, has not, have not recommended to do this. This is showing poor governance. If you are going to, with sympathy, and there's no reason not to have sympathy for these people's plight, um, change what is a structure for our, our, our community every time somebody brings it to the table. And there will be many people who will do so, and I don't blame them, I and mean, lots of people have talked about this. In the information packages, it says that there's going to be a re or potential for a review in 2025. I would strongly recommend that we do do a review of the OCP in 2025. It is past time that it was revised. And when we have full input from the <coughs> community, not just a small group here, and not the people who got on an email thread or whatever, but when we have the full community with an opportunity to give their input, there may be some obvious changes that need to be made to the OCP. And if that, in fact, um, supports these proponents' of, uh, wishes and, and other people's wishes, then they can resubmit then. If they've waited a year now, it's only another year. I know it sounds painful, but the fact is is that you know government works slow. <laughs> um, but I don't think that making swap changes is going to do the community any good. This is not about the individual, it's about the community as a whole. And the OCP is supposed to guide us in the community as a whole. And if we stop, if we start making little changes to because we we have empathy, we have sympathy, these are members of our community, why wouldn't we have? But if we start doing that, there's no end to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. <coughs> Kim Hill, <coughs> 1070 Brookview Drive. Uh, yeah, I concur with some of uh, the previous speakers here. Uh, spot, well, spot changes to the OCP, a very bad idea. Uh, it's, it, it diverges, it, it's, it, it, I, I'm dismayed that it is, uh, it, we're diverging from the practices that have kept me chosen the way it is. Uh, this is not the way that we usually do business here. And I think that this, this allowing this, this, this sort of a distraction is, uh, Taking away from other important matters, it's, uh, if the OCP needs to be revised, I rather like the OCP. Matter <coughs> of fact, I love the OCP. It's uh, it's it's my bible. Uh, uh, if there's major changes to be made from it, that call for major changes should come from the community, not uh, ad hoc here and there, uh, hither and nither. Uh, it's, uh, it's unhealthy, and I'm opposed to it. I'm opposed to this spot rezoning. Uh, with all respect to uh, the wishes and needs for individuals, we are a community. We need to work as a community together and looking to the future. Make sure this place is the special place it is now. It stays that way. We have to be different. We are different. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hill. I'm going to... Okay. Ms. Athen, you're... Oh, yeah. that's okay. Okay. Jumping up, thank you. <coughs> Sarah Anthony, the Chosen Road. I've sort of been taking some notes during this of some things. Um, I think the main thing I want to address is, do you hear a lot of this comment all the time about keeping the Chosen the same? Um, and people, you know, talking about how they love growing, living here, how they love watching their kids grow up here. Problem is, is that is going to end if we keep going this way. That is, that is done. Nobody can afford to have kids here. Uh, that's why we're here today in this room is because people cannot afford to have their kids live here. There are not going to be any more children playing. Um, eventually, people will you know, pass on, move to other properties. Those properties are too expensive for most people's families who've moved far away where they could afford. I, you talk about farmers. I, I'm sorry, I have to really get emotional about this because no farmer can afford to buy property here. 
Like it is so unattainable. So who, what farms are going to exist in 20 years? Well, they're not. They're just not. This is just going to be either a wealthy bedroom community or a bunch of people are going to, you know, uh, developers are going to buy up property and hold on to it until they can change it. So by digging our heels in, we are effectively allowing change. I know this, and, and yeah, it's great. Um, I guess, you know, maybe because I see so many people, my age group, um, suffering from this, it is really hard to watch, you know. And, you know, we have people here who are, who have raised kids and, and have had to watch them go and, and get it. And some people have had to have their kids go and are maybe upset about that now and kind of holding um, a grudge about that, unfortunately. But I don't think that's a reason to let somebody else suffer. We do have an opportunity here to do this for one family because it is in the OCP. The OCP allows for change. That is what it's supposed to do. And I'm sorry, it is not Holy Scripture. It, it is not. I mean, even as, as somebody who, fun fact about me, my major was religion. I mean, maybe if the Holy Scripture had changed, sometimes we wouldn't have so many wars and things. So things like that do need to change. Times change. What our needs have are have changed a lot. It is not the same world that you all grew up here in. It, it would be nice if it could stay the same forever, but it, it just can't. I I feel badly for that because I love those things about it here too. I I totally get that. But I also just feel like we're we're going down a dangerous path without that. So, thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Anthony. Hi. Jill Armstrong, Lysandra Road. Um, I'm opposed to this, but people are talking like this is only happen, happening in the Chosen. Well, it's happening on all of Vancouver Island. I grew up in the Chosen, so that's a long time, but when my husband and I moved here 51 years ago, um, it was because I couldn't afford to live in town. And so we moved to Machosan, which was um, affordable, really affordable. So it's all a Vancouver Island. It's Vancouver. It's, it's, Machosan's not unusual. So, so you can buy a pretty ticky tacky house in Royal Bay for what, 900,000, maybe a million? Well, you know, there's a lot of homes in Machosan that have beautiful property and maybe the house needs a lot of work, but there are still some homes in the eight, 900,000. So I don't think Machosan's um, any different than a lot of communities. And a lot of my friend's kids have had to move north of uh, the Malhap, which is not the end of the world, but that's why a lot of us young people are were in Machosan because we had to move out of other areas that were unaffordable. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Ms. Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one more thing to say. Wait, wait. Sorry, Mr. Brady. I'm gonna. I'll call for a uh, second round of speakers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Beth Bacon, the chosen resident. I wasn't gonna speak because you've had three letters from me, but I hope you take into consideration all the points, not just the number of people that speak, but the validity of the of the points. I'm really moved by the two residents on Leafield who say that they will be directly impacted and um, especially the man, Richard, I think is his name, who says this is going to affect his, his well if somebody puts another well in just, just below his. Um, what I'd like to do, just in short, um, I want to say that upland zoning is not arbitrary. It's based on topography. You can't change that. I want our council, because this is why you're here, because this is what we expect from you, is to look through the window of environment and climate change. The re review of the OCP should happen, and it should change in the direction of down zoning. We need to have larger parcels of land, not smaller parcels of land. We need to protect our uplands for the trees, for the cooling effect that they provide, for the protection of wildlife habitat, and for water resources. Please consider that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms.
say. Okay, are there any more speakers who have not yet been heard? Okay. If it's important to us to understand all no. this, it's better Ms. to have a better... Mr. Berger, if you want to, or <coughs> Berger, if you no, want to come in? It's just in general, we can't understand some of the yeah. stuff here in the back. It is. Okay, well, folks, sorry, we're, we're, we have what we have. Council can hear everybody. I, I just ask you to listen to what we, listen as closely as you can. We'll, we'll, hearing about the mics, we'll see what we can do as we go ahead here. Um, uh, I'm, okay, so I'm going to uh, just call one more time for anyone who has not yet spoken. Seeing none, I'm going to ask um, for a second round of speakers. Uh, the one thing I want to say, though, is there's not going to be any opportunity after the hearing to address this directly, so now is the time to speak. Um, Mr. Wright, I know you want to speak, but I'm actually going to turn to Ms. Moore. You can finish your uh, your comments. And I would suggest you start, you, have, you want to start in a section about risk and maybe start there. Thank you. Um, Chris Moore again. Uh, just to continue, um, I have gone <coughs> through this bit down to what I'm trying to do is identify risks more than might be apparent. Um, the risk in a, obviously approving this application for rezoning. Uh, the aspect of precedent sen setting is indeed real. And potential, there are potential applicants with split zone properties. That's important, waiting in the wings. You, I am sure, uh, are well known to at least one, if not two of them. Also, um, I think I don't have to remind you that each member of council, in your own words, in the context of your election campaign in 2022, indicated your commitment at that time to our existing OCP. Um, should this, this is a big one, should this application receive approval tonight or subsequently, I'm concerned that it will result also in a lack of trust and faith in members of council, uh, in the minds of countless Machosan residents, and I suggest that is not at all a desirable outcome. You guys have things to do, and you've got a couple more years in front of you, and we don't want to get in that situation. So, resolution, split zones are no fun, and they've always been problematic. Um, some members have likened this application to what is generally known as a variance, which usually focus on setbacks and similar attributes. Um, hopefully you're now aware that variances where they occur and have recently occurred have been within the confines of our OCP. So it's a different kettle of fish. Last bit, almost dangling carrots to the proponents in this application, especially at one point in the guise that it would be a fit within the affordable housing initiative of the provincial government is a disservice to them. And it does nothing but prolong the possible pain. This could and should have been dealt with many, many months ago. In summary, the APRM and I'm happy to say we now have 416 members. Uh, and on behalf of most of those, the vast majority, <coughs> and in light of the preceding, we hereby request that you hear, heed the words of our planner and the wishes of a significant number of residents and deny this application for a result. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Mr. White, do you want to? Uh, Eric White, 42 Uh Miss Rumor there just kind of shot it across the bow for me of uh, just saying basically if you can't afford to live here, get out. Guess how many farmers can afford to live here? None. 
no, no one my age is buying a farm out here. So she basically just told me to get out. I'm lucky enough to live on family land. So that's why I'm still here. There's no new farmers coming into our community. This family here has a young kid. Maybe this young kid will fall in love with tractors and we will have one more farmer out here. But if we keep denying families the ability to have kids out here, if you keep denying farmers the ability to train young farmers to keep this a farming community and you're basically just stabbing us in the back and saying, there's no succession, there's no one here for you to train. You know, we're a farming community, but there's no one left. Thank you guys, please don't deny them. Give their chance, give their kid a chance. Thank you, Mr. White. Spurs. I'll talk fast. Dina Rivers, 4471 Leafield Road. Um, the major concern by the opponent seems to be that this is going to open a Pandora's box, that if successful, it's going to lead to a bunch more applications. Uh, one of the written submissions even said it was uh, would undermine the integrity of the OCP. My understanding is this process itself is within the OCP. This was contemplated for people to come and make individual applications to amend the OCP. Um, that is exactly what this process is for. And if we are not going to ever go away from the OCP, then the whole procedure for doing this should be taken out of the OCP. Um, this is what it's for, is an individual application. This is not about the community or the OCP. That will <laughs> maybe someday be amended. This is about the individual application of these people. Um, the OCP is a tool, it is a guideline, it is not a law. If it was a law, we wouldn't have the ability to make the application to appeal it. The concerns raised, other than the well, I actually have concerns about that, but I'm sure it'll be dealt with at the next process, can all be answered with appropriate requirements at the building stage. The building permits, I've done it. Um, it's very intensive. Chris is awesome, by the way. Um, Right now, the applicants could certainly go ahead. They could cut down trees. They could put in livestock and use all the well water. They can do a lot of these things already. What they can't do is move their family in so that they can stay here as they age. If you take out all of the objections based on opening the floodgates or that the OCP should not be changed even though it's got an amendment principle in it and consider carefully what the actual substantive objections are, um, then, well, I'm sure you're well, is a substantive one. Everything else really isn't a substantive um, objection to this individual application. It's a substantive objection to the OCP being changed. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Rips. Yeah, Richard Jessen again, Leafield Road. I just wanted to say one more time, reiterate that um, the Cotes, um, great people, if they wanted to, they could build a secondary suite as it stands and they could move into the secondary suite. I mean, they can do whatever they want, but they could make a lovely suite there and their young family could live in a house up front and they could do that tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rod Mitchell, Leafield Road. This lady reminded me of something. Uh, she's talking about the value of the upland, rural upland, and how it is defined by topography. Well, we have a section that is defined by topography, and that's why our property is uh, zoned uplands. The uplands in Machosan are refuges, refuges for a number of uh, rare plants, and that's because they're basically crap land, right? They were, they were only developed into lots much later than all the rest of the land because it was considered useless. So everywhere else, we cut down the Gary Oak and you know we did a lot of things. And there's such a tiny bit of that kind of ecosystem left untouched. And a lot of it is up on these rural bluffs. We recognize that at our place after we realized that we couldn't subdivide anyway and we never could up top. So we put a conservation covenant on just a little under half of our land. And I tell you that, I tell you that because that's how much we value that kind of ecosystem in Mitchelson. And 
the, the particularly the, the rocky bluffs, we would really not like to see them down zoned. Uh, the suggestion was that if we were to uh, revise our community plan, that it would be more like down zoning should be the goal. Thank you. Great, thank you. Ms. Fresh. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to state again that um, in the conclusion of the report, it says the policy support is not strong. It does not say that it should be rejected. It talks about the policies and it talks about some of the historical policies in the OCP, including the densification policy. It does not reject it. It is not definitive. I'd like to identify a few other definitives. There have been environmental reviews completed. They're in the report, which is over 250 pages long attached to tonight's agenda. I'm speaking really close, and I'm hoping everybody <laughs> in the back can hear me. Um, there are tremendous pictures and all that. I'm assuming, I'm, I'm not sure, that it addresses the environmental interest expressed by the neighbor on Lee Field. I've also put in a number of wells. I have wells on my street, and I'm putting in a well myself. It is not up to this council, has no jurisdiction over the location of wells. That's the provincial government. It's actually between the landowner and the well driller. He could, the Cotes could go out tomorrow and decide they're going to put in a new well for their existing home and nobody has to be consulted about it. I want to make that clear. Um, zoning changes are not akin to a variance. They are much more significant than a variance and that's why the OCP process does have a process for it. So I want that to be clear and distinct. People here have talked about the need for affordable housing, and yet we've heard about the need to upsize lots. Well, we do have facts, and we've had a lot of housing discussion about the fact that our housing prices and our land values are continuing to increase. They are not decreasing. Uh, that's a global statement. This application is specific to a family. Again, it addresses for their family the ability to reside and have an affordable experience living in the chosen with their family. Um, and finally, the, in the planner's conclusion, the fact that um, it's going to increase the potential for subdivision. Those subdivision opportunities are out there now. If you've got a lot that is bigger than the minimum zone and you fall into that zone and you want to, take your 10 acre lot and you can have five two acre lots, it's available now. You've got to have the money to get a plan drawn up, to get a septic plan drawn up, to have water proof of service done. It's the barrier to entry is money right now. So in reality, you're not going to see a flood of applications coming in. Um, so. I think, again, there's a process here, you're following it, and I thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Hirsch. Hello, I'm Bonnie Hardy. We live on Happy Valley Road. And I just wanted to make a statement that we came here loving the property, loving the chosen. And one of the reasons we've stayed here for so long is for the simple reason that we feel protected by the plans, the laws, the governance of, of the chosen, that it's protecting us from following some of our neighbors' uh, reconstruction. As you drive out of the chosen, if you drive out of the chosen either way, and you try to find your way around, if you haven't done it lately, it's a real challenge. I don't know where we are when we start riding around. And I would thank, thank you, thank the people here who had enough whatever it takes to stand up here. But I'm really grateful to live in the Chosen and I'm grateful for the rules and regulations that govern how we, how we live, how we do control our, our um, development, how we protect our rural status, which I think is incredibly essential. 
and um, we're very pleased to be here. But I would really suggest to you that we have to be careful because precedent is extremely dangerous and we have to make sure that we don't set a precedent that we cannot live with in future. Thanks. Thank you, Sergeant. Okay. Um, I'm going to call, okay, we've had a first round of uh, inputs and subsequent speakers. Um, I will now call a second time for speakers. Again, if you wish to speak for or against the proposed bylaws, please address council, say your name, and the street you're on for the public record. And just so you know, I have to do this for a third and final time, but I, again, for a second time, are there any speakers? And again, a note that once the public hearing closes, that is it in terms of public comment about this particular issue. So, okay. I will now call a third and final time to see if there are any speakers from the community, from the public who wish to address the bylaws that are before council. Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to close off the public input session of this public hearing. And I want to thank everyone for all of the comments received and the respectful nature with which they were provided. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn, but I want to let everyone know that there's a council meeting immediately following, and we're likely to um, have this, uh, this particular issue before us later tonight. So. So, Council, could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, or sorry, to adjourn the meeting? From Councillor Donaldson, a seconder, Mayor Bull, and uh, folks, uh, motion for us to adjourn. All in favor? Okay, we're gonna, the meeting is now adjourned.